Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about Spark dedupe. How to do dedupe in Spark. So uh, this is the practical video of this. It's just a one-liner syntax. I can even complete this video in just one minute also. So I, I want to explain the use case of this dedupe first of all. So how in my case I faced this dedupe and how we have uh, resolved it. So the dedupe issue. So I want to explain you as a use case. Okay, so first of all, let's understand what is dedupe, deduplication, what does that mean? So when you have some duplicates in your table or in your record, so removing the duplicate, the process is called dedupe. So now imagine that you are explaining a very big story of your project and in the very small portion, you are explaining some cases like dedupe. In that case, so interviewer can ask you, when you say that you have uh, fixed dedupe issues, so now I am the interviewer, imagine. So the interviewer can ask you how this duplicate centered into picture. So removing duplicate is the process called dedupe. When you say I have done dedupe, now the question is why the duplicate enters into picture. So a typical answer is you can say the source itself has the duplicates. The data that comes from the source team, they itself has the duplicates. But that is an acceptable answer. But uh, if you want to explain more realistic answer, it will be better. So today I'm going to explain you one such use case which I have done. So we have a lot of use cases for duplicates, but I'm going to explain you one of the use cases for you. So for that, I'll, I'll just give you my uh, a, a mini project architecture of mine. So if you see like I have MySQL, uh, so I have to use Spark to read this data. Okay, so I, I'm doing a simple read one to one and then I'm loading this to Hive. Okay, so I'm loading this to Hive. So Hive act as an intermediate data storage like staging. So intermediately I have to store. So after you store, imagine the table name is A. Okay, so after storing this data, uh, I have to again do a Spark processing. Processing. And then finally, I'll be loading the data to Oracle, right? So write Oracle, right? So you can ask me that you can do directly from MySQL to Oracle, right? Via Spark. So why you want to bring the data to Hive and then to Oracle? So that's a different use case. So we have uh, we have a different use case like uh, for Hive. Why we have introduced Hive here as an intermediate storage? So I, I I don't want to explain that now because the video will be very lengthier. So I'll make a separate video of explaining the complete uh, use case of it. So now uh, the thing is, imagine this is the case. This is the architecture. Okay. So MySQL to Spark and then again Spark is writing. Uh, the data what it has read from MySQL as an intermediate table uh, in Hive the table name is A and then again you do a Spark processing reading the A table and then you do some process and then write it to Oracle this is a case now I want to schedule the whole case and the, the scheduler should happen five minutes once the job should run now imagine first schedule has been executed so first schedule is running fine and then the second schedule after five minutes again it is running fine now when the third schedule gets starts or somewhere at the mid it get failed for example the third schedule gets started so it is the spark is reading 200 records from mysql and in hive it is like 75 records has been written successfully and the balance 125 is in process of writing in Hive. But what happened after completing the 75 records right in Hive, the job get failed. The third uh, schedule was failed. The failure could be, the failure reason could be different things. So maybe the infrastructure issue or code issue or some, some issue with the scheduler itself. So it could be a lot of issue. So now imagine uh, whatever the issue it is, uh, we have fixed it. Imagine. And then I'm asking the scheduler team to please restart the schedule. So when they restart, what happens here? Now again, the job runs and again it will read the 200 records and what when when it writes to high what it will do it will write 200 full again so already 75 has been written but again it is writing the 200 it should write only 125 balance record but since it's a restart from the first now the table a will have 200 plus 75 275 records will be there for the third schedule run now here 75 records are duplicates so now I'm writing this, I'm reading this data via Spark processing and writing to Oracle. In Oracle, I'm getting an issue, deadlock, deadlock issue. For writing duplicates, you are getting deadlock issue in the Oracle. So in Oracle, like we have the problem of deadlock, various reasons are there. One of the reason in Oracle write will get failed is when you write duplicates, when there is some primary key constraints are there. 
you will get this kind of issue and the write get failed. Now, after write gets failed, we come to know, okay, there is some problem with the data and then we queried Hive because Hive is act as a source for this Oracle, right? So when we try to query the Hive for that particular sequence of the third, third schedule, for the particular third schedule, we checked in Hive, we come to know we have 275 records for the third run. So that means 75 records are duplicates. We did this group by count of uh, serial number, first row, first column. And each column is like around 75 rows has more than two counts, which is 75, right? Uh, because like 75 records should have more than one record because they are duplicates already. Now you can ask me a question here. So why can't you avoid the duplicates even after the restart? You can consider of having only 125 record as a balance. Why again 200? Okay, that is a different case. Now we have the fix for it. But imagine before the fix. So there was no check. When the restart happens, it will do from the first. But then we did a fix after it. But now the problem we are speaking about before the fix. Whenever you do a restart, it is again start writing the data from the first. And with respect to Hive, you will not have any problem because Hive accepts duplicates because we don't have constraints on it. So it accepts duplicates. But when I write it to Oracle, I'll come to know. Now the problem occurred. Okay, so now the problem has been occurred. Now how you will overcome it? So the overcome thing is you have to do a dedo, which you have to drop the duplicates from the table A and then you have to write it to Oracle. Now we enter into Spark dedo. So in Spark, we have a function called drop duplicates. It's a one-liner function. You can use it. Drop duplicates. So after you do a drop duplicate, create a new table as A underscore dedoop. A underscore dedoop. So now what you have to do, previously Spark used to read this table and then write it to Spark. Now you should not use this because if you use this, it will have the du duplicates data, right? Now you have to consider this table, read this A dedoop and then write it to Oracle. Okay, so this is this is how like we used dedoop for certain cases. Now I'll practically show you, as I already told you, it's just a one-liner thing. So first you have to read some data, right? So I'll, I'll show you by reading some data. Okay, so I'm reading a data. I'll show you this DF as well. So it has like five rows. So if you see three columns, C0, C1, and C2. So serial number, name, and then imagine the salary. Okay, let's take it as a third column as a salary. So if you see here, two Rahul thousand is repeated again, two Rahul thousand. So this is a duplicate. The whole row records of a particular row is duplicated. Now I'm going to use this drop duplicate without, I'm not passing anything to the function. When you do this, what it will do, it will consider the entire row. Now, if you see here, so two Rahul thousand has been removed. One, one, one record has been removed. So we have only four records, right? So now I want to drop duplicate based on a particular column, not the entire records. I don't want to check the entire record. I want to pass with particular column. Let's take this. So if, if you see here, I have passed C0 here. And that means you have to do du drop duplicates based on the first column. It's like doing distant of in the uh, SQL, right? So now if you see, when, we, when you take the first column, one is repeated two times. So that means, so, okay, let's take, this is the actual DF, right? So one is repeated two times and two is repeated two times. So you will have one, two, three as a final, you can see here. So now you have did the duplicates, drop duplicates based on one particular column. So both the cases we use. So this also you can use. I have used both and this kind of drop duplicates also I have used. So most of the cases we used to go for drop duplicates with the certain columns. We used to do a drop duplicate based on a particular column or more than one column like primary key or composite key, something like that. So in this video, as I already told you, I can even complete this video in one minute just by showing this demo. I wanted to explain uh, the full use case of how the dedupe occurred and what is the fix for it. Okay. So thanks for watching. If you really like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. So we have a lot of big data videos. I've shared the playlist link. If you click it, you will see complete big data videos. Thanks for watching.